pregame show here, and uh, if anybody knows about um, people suffering from respiratory disease, it's this guy, Nick Papain, attorney representing 3,000 9 first responders. I want to get into how this affects your clients, but Frankie, you got some breaking news for us. Oh, now. yeah, very quickly. You know, before we went on air, John, we were talking about how here in New York City there's a special election uh, coming up in March that uh, one of the, the leading candidate in that election, Donovan Richards, has called for postponing that election in light of the coronavirus. Well, now Louisiana has become the first state to postpone its primary over the coronavirus. They were supposed to have their presidential primary on April 4th. That is now going to be moved to June 20th. That's my understanding. Sounds like hogwash to me. I think there's a lot of fear, fright, and hysteria, a lot more than we need. But to some people, um, they're most at risk. And these are the folks that were 9-11 uh, first responders. It's, uh, 20 years later, and they're still suffering terribly. Many of them, many have died, and you have uh, 3,000 some odd clients who are um, who are still, you know, eligible and trying to make claims to the victims' comp fund. How does this coronavirus exacerbate their problems? Well, John, as you pointed out, you know, it's that 20 percent of those who may contract the coronavirus that there's particular concern. 80 percent uh, will. Uh, not face any real serious dangers, but the concern is over the 20 percent who have, for example, underlying uh, health problems. And classic examples of those people are your first responders, your 9-11 first responders, many of whom suffer from respiratory conditions, be it asthma, interstitial lung disease, and, and other uh, digestive and uh, uh, respiratory conditions, as well as cancers that have been linked by the World Trade Center Health Program um, to their exposure to the toxins at the World Trade Center disaster site. And these uh, cancer victims obviously are facing uh, immune uh, system uh, compromises, which also make them uh, that much more um, susceptible to the virus and to the complications that can be fatal. A little later on in the show, we're going to have Mike Burke here. He's a retired uh, FDMY uh, guy who was a first responder. Now he's the proprietor of this famous pizzeria. But uh, my brother and I uh, worked across the street from the uh, World Trade Center. We worked over in the uh, financial center there. Um, and, you know, thankfully, I seem to be okay. But um, my brother actually lost, uh, you know, almost 20% of one of his kidneys. I know some other people who had some major kidney problems, kidney cancers. Yes. Is that one of the things that's affecting a lot of people here? Uh, yes. We, we have many, uh, there are a number of our clients uh, who are uh, victims of uh, kidney cancer. And as I said, you know, we're, we're now dealing with the immune system. And, and that's one of the reports we're hearing about those who are particularly susceptible uh, to the more serious uh, consequences of contracting the coronavirus. And, you know, for these first responders, uh, and also for the survivors of 9-11, it's just not first responders, um, which you have about 76,000 first responders who have already registered um, with the 9-11 World Trade Center Health Program. Uh, but you also have another 25,000 uh, people who are considered survivors, people who worked downtown, who lived downtown, so who went to school downtown. Nick, uh, just so folks know, I know you're doing this press conference this afternoon uh, right around the corner from the World Trade Center at, at 2 o'clock. What are you asking for exactly? I know uh, these are folks that have a lot of respiratory issues and are more likely to be susceptible to corona and have a tougher time with corona if they do get it, but what specifically are you hoping? Well, it, it's a twofold uh, purpose. Number one, to inform people out there that may not be aware that they qualify for free medical treatment at the World Trade Center Health Program if they, in fact, have a 9-11 related illness, which could be a respiratory condition or it could be a number of different cancers that have been linked to 9-11 exposure. Number two, it's a great program, the World Trade Center Health Program. Anybody who has been fortunate enough to enroll in the program can attest to how exhaustive they are in screening, in monitoring, in diagnosing, and in rendering qualified treatment. It's so a great pro The problem, jo uh, John and Frank, is getting into that program. Yeah. We have clients who have waited more than six months. Uh, we recently had a client who passed away 
Um, While who, he was waiting to get in. Yeah, and he died of, of kidney cancer. So there's a number that people can call if they think they should be considered for the Victims' Compensation Fund. You can help them get into the Victims' Compensation Fund. Yes. That's this number, 888-892-4748. 888-892-4748. Um, and also, you can email me, jt at liquidlunchtv.com. If you didn't write that down, just you could probably remember right. that, jt at liquidlunchtv.com. Email me, and I'll put you in touch with Nick and share any of the numbers if you think that uh, you need some help with this. Yeah, and, and John, that, that is the, the number to actually directly contact the World Trade Center Health Program in order to start the process to get your appointment, to fill out an application, and see what benefits you qualify for. It's a great program. It's, the problem is getting more staffing. They need uh, better staffing there. Uh, there are several facilities that see as little as two patients a day because they just don't have the proper staffing. Great program, needs more funding, needs better staffing. So how, uh, how long does it take for someone who's been affected, they meet all the criteria to get some compensation? Well, as far as the Victim Compensation Fund, uh, from the time they apply, it can take a year, it can take two years. Although we've had clients who, because of their dire circumstances, because they're in stage four cancer, um, have had their uh, applications uh, uh, expedited, and we've gotten uh, them uh, compensation in a, as little as two or three months. Wow. All right. Well, there is hope out there, and there's great people fighting uh, to keep that hope alive, like this guy right here, Nick Papain. Um, email me if you want to know more information on how to get a hold of him or any of the numbers you can contact for the uh, World Trade Center uh, Health Organization. And uh, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, you're having a press conference today. Yes, right? uh, John, we're having a press conference at my office, which is at 120 Broadway, which is only a couple blocks from the World Trade Center. All right. Well, if you want to know more about what these guys are doing to help uh, those affected and uh, probably going to be affected some more by the corona scare, uh, Get yourself down to 120 Broadway and hear all about it. Any other uh, breaking news right now, Frankie? Or? Well, um, you know, the, basically closure after closure. Uh, Louisiana postponing the Democratic primary over the uh, over the coronavirus and uh, a lot of other things. It's actually, as I mentioned earlier, it's a shorter list of things that are remaining open. Uh, in non-corona related news, and there is such a thing, Former Army intelligence analyst Chelsea Manning has been uh, released from jail. Um, we, she's being released from jail after the grand jury was bis disbanded in the WikiLeaks case. Manning had been detained in Alexandria Detention Center for 11 months in civil contempt for her refusal to testify in that case. But federal judge Anthony Tranga said Manning's appearance before the jury is no longer needed and her detention no longer serves any coercive purpose. So this comes a day after the former RB private committed suicide in jail. So she's been released. All right. We're going to take a uh, quick break. Jorah Pollock is going to be with us. He's the author of Rethinking Real Estate, also the co-chair of the Urban Land Institute's Tech and Innovation Council. We're going to take a quick break right here. And I'll tell you, Frankie, with everybody being locked up in the house and nobody going anywhere, sporting events are canceled, I'm thinking that the one stock I want to buy is for marriage counselors <laughs> because there's going to be a lot of husbands and wives that have to do a lot of talking to each other, which... Uh, that's, that's never good. That's not going to be a good thing. You guys do divorce law? <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a quick break. We're going to come back with more Liquid Lunch pregame right after this. 